Hey, it's Clip of the Day time where Buck Sexton and I pick out the best hot take, the most fun that we had for all of you to be able to experience on the show. That's right, and this segment is brought to you by ExpressVPN, which is the virtual private network that we trust to protect our online data. When I use ExpressVPN, the big tech companies can't see my IP address, my identity is anonymized, and my data is encrypted. That gives me the absolute maximum protection. And what I like most is how easy it is to use. All you do is download the app. But first, you got to set up your account, right? So go to expressvpn.com slash patriot. You'll get an extra three months free, or you can click on the link. That's expressvpn.com slash patriot. And now it's time for the clip of the day. There's an interesting story going on right now in the NBA with a player named Kyrie Irving. Now, we've talked before about how NBA players have been very questioning in many ways of the efficacy and necessity of COVID vaccines. But essentially, because of city mandates in New York City, in L.A., and in San Francisco, by and large, if you are an athlete in those uh, locations playing indoors and you are refusing to be vaccinated, you are not able to do your job. So Kyrie Irving right now, at least for the moment, is sticking to his guns and refusing to be held, uh, uh, be a part of the COVID vaccine mandate, and he therefore is not going to be able to play in your hometown of New York City for the Brooklyn Nets. He's one of the best players in the NBA, one of the highest paid. What's interesting to me is not only Kyrie Irving having the resources to fight against the COVID vaccine mandate, and also to put a different spin on who is refusing the COVID vaccine, right? We're not talking about Southwest Airline pilots. We're not talking about Trump supporting red state voters. What's interesting here, Buck, is not only Kyrie Irving so far saying no to the COVID vaccine, it's what this says about larger society's ability to understand and acquiesce to risk. And I want to I want to see if you buy into this analogy here. In the 1990s, Magic Johnson tested positive for HIV. At that point in time, HIV was a death sentence. The idea was if you got it, you were going to die and announced that he was no longer going to be able to play. After getting treatment, The NBA permitted Magic Johnson to come back and play. They changed protocols to say if you had a cut, you had to come off the court. There were players that were apprehensive and nervous about the idea, obviously with bodies banging into each other, the idea of potentially blood transmission leading to an HIV infection. But Magic Johnson was allowed to play. I want to contrast that. And by the way, that's the right decision, I think, based on the data and the science But the risk of an HIV infection occurring, however remote and limited it might have been during the course of competition, was at that point in time considered to be a death sentence. In other words, unlike COVID, which spreads, and if you get it, you're sick. If you're a young, healthy athlete, you might not even know you had it. We haven't had any athletes who are uh, in, in competition that we know of at the professional level where COVID has even spread from one team to another or one player to another, even in something like football where you're tackling, certainly in basketball, it hasn't happened. And obviously, Michael Jordan is one of the most famous athletes of all time, partly because he played basketball with the flu, refused to allow the flu, at least according to a historical record, to keep him from having an incredible game, Obviously, the flu is very communicable during the course of a game as well. That made him a legend. Do you find this interesting in the space of, whatever it is, 25 years roughly, Buck, we have gone from let's find a way to allow Magic Johnson to play with HIV, which at that time was effectively a death sentence, to now we can't even allow Kyrie Irving in New York City or L.A. or San Francisco to play if he's unvaccinated, even though, Buck, they can test him and confirm that he isn't COVID positive and that anybody out there who is nervous about this could go get their own COVID vaccine and theoretically have even more protection. What does that tell us 
about risk analysis and risk factors, do you find this as intriguing as I do in a larger societal picture? Well, yes, because the people who are pushing for the mandates won't really say this out loud, but they need in their own minds for the mandates to be universal and without exception, right? So they, they need it to apply to everybody. They need there to be almost no opt-outs or loopholes whatsoever, because in their minds, they're going to turn COVID. And this is, I think, where the epidemiology, not that I'm a doctor or playing one on radio, but this is where the epidemiology becomes a problem for them. They think that this is going to be like measles. They think that this is going to be like malaria, a disease that we have effectively eradicated in the United States. They don't seem to understand that this is going to be much more like either the common cold or the flu in terms of the various iterations it's of it, never the strains, going away. the mutations. There, it will never be gone entirely. The same way that as much as it would save a lot of lives and billions of dollars of lost productivity and working hours every year to get rid of the common cold, to get rid of the flu, we don't yet have the scientific basis to do that. We don't yet have the knowledge to do that. And we are seeing, I think, that people believe that this is going to be because this is what they're saying also about the vaccine, man. It's oh, it's just like what about measles, mumps, rubella? Those are different diseases that have different levels of uh, or, or different speeds of, of mutation and also are much more dangerous to children if they get them. I mean, that, that's so. So they're comparing things that aren't really that much alike. And they're negating things that actually do have a lot of similarities with this. And because of the one size fits all policy is the only policy that will allow them to feel safe and warm at night when they go to sleep. The Fauciites want this to be a everyone has to bend the knee scenario. And with Kyrie Irving, I mean, of course, what are we really even talking about here? Right. When, when you discuss the application of this policy, he might get covid and therefore he might expose some of his teammates. Well, he might get covid and expose people in any number of ways that aren't his teammates. Where this is the world we live in, why not at least make it a he's got to get tested regimen, which the Biden administration and their OSHA rule says is an opt out from vaccination for employers more than 100. So why go to this extreme? The chance of Kyrie Irving getting COVID and dying from it is effectively zero. I mean, it's almost yes. zero. it's statistically zero. And yet they're going to force him to get this shot. You sit here, you say, if they can do this to you based on the risk parameters that we're dealing with, what can the government not do to you in the name of health? This is what I think the conversation people need to start to have, need to start to think about. And and I think what has to happen is people with the resources can fight this. I, I think what Kyrie Irving, whether you agree or disagree with him on a variety of different subjects, he has the financial resources to be able to survive and take care of his family without making the money right now. And so there are a lot of people out there with the same financial resources. These are the people that need to be fighting the battle because it's unfortunate, but there's a lot of people out there who are facing COVID vaccine mandates. We know because we've taken their calls, Buck, who, hey, if they don't get the shot, then they aren't able to pay their mortgage. They aren't able to take care and go get food for their family. And so as a result, a lot of people have to comply even though they fundamentally reject the very uh, the, the very precept of requiring mandating these vaccines. So I, it also changes the storyline of who exactly is fighting this battle. And I think it's an incredibly powerful move by Kyrie Irving uh, in many respects. 